Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of the XFL Show. I am Old Man Troy, joined by the marvelous youngster Kevin Cunningham, a.k.a. Kid Cunny on Twitter. You know what, youngster? I probably caught you off guard on last week's episode by adding that music in the background for a little bit. How'd you like that? Did you like the music touch to it? Or are you like, man, old man, you've lost it, you're off your rocker? No, I liked it. <laughs> I straight up liked it. Uh, I thought it was cool. I thought it was different. Um, I was a fan, and I know we have less than basically 15 minutes remaining now on the show, so I'll shut up. But, yeah, I, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, th- for those that listen in every week and don't know, Kevin and I do a number of shows. So this is kind of my what, – what's the word I'm looking for when you kind of got to come off of the come off of the anxiety? I'm kind of like – De- decompressing right now youngster yeah because you and i just had a pretty heated show for our pittsburgh market and whoa we well, you and i both got a little worked up so we're gonna have a fun show today on the xfl this is all about one city because we always talk about if you want us to talk about something on this show find us on twitter at youngster old man and guess what youngster we had a taker last week sending us like YouTube videos and links to why Syracuse would be a great place for the XFL, and it intrigued me. And so I played the YouTube videos, I went to the links, and you know what, youngster? The XFL might not be a bad place for a team. I mentioned last week that nowhere in the north could you have a team because of the weather. Well, uh uh-oh, guess what? Syracuse just didn't even come to mind, but the carrier dome's up there, youngster. They could have a team in a dome in the north, and that would make sense to me. And you brought up last week a college-type town. Well, man, Syracuse, they are passionate about their sports. I know they have professional lacrosse up there. They have Syracuse, a university that, ah, football-wise, not great, but a few, uh, this is not a few, this is a lot of years back, I was actually visiting Syracuse, and I went to a Syracuse-Miami game when Syracuse wasn't very good and Miami was. That place was sold out, and they were cheering on their team. They were cheering them on. I think you would have a passionate fan base up in Syracuse. You'd have a place to play and not have to bear the bad elements in the beginning of spring I liked it. When I saw that on Twitter, at first I was like, eh. And then when I looked at it more and thought about it more, I think Syracuse might just be a legitimate city, one of those first initial teams in the XFL. What are your thoughts, youngster? Yeah, I don't think it would be that long. And I guess based off last week's show, it's like, yeah, the North in general, um, here's why, you know, high school prospects, typically the SEC dominates in college football. They get more players to the NFL because it matters more in the South and there's more better weather. There's more opportunities. That's all true. This league also, the XFL is going to be starting in February of 2020 and it goes until April, a 10 weeks, 10 weeks season. And then the playoffs. So like, for example, in 2001, the XFL, the original XFL, the Super Bowl, so, <laughs> the Super Bowl, the championship game for the XFL was played on April 15th. So it, you don't even necessarily need a dome. I mean, just looking at teams in 2001, there were Chicago, there was New York slash New Jersey. I mean, that was a team. They played in Giant Stadium. <laughs> so you don't even necessarily need a dome. But, yeah, I think a place like Syracuse, it hits on, I think, the point we were trying to make that you need a passionate fan base. And anytime I'm a Duke basketball fan, um, so people listening to this show, uh, Syracuse fans can hate on me for this, but I'm a Duke basketball fan, and anytime they would go to Syracuse, I mean, you know it's going to be loud. You know the crowd's going to be hectic. You know Syracuse is going to play you well. They're going to feed off the energy. I think XFL, it needs a stadium that – may not be 100,000 deep like Columbus, Ohio, like the Ohio State Buckeyes. I I think putting an XFL team there, uh, yeah, they care about football a lot. Um, It's colder, but again, February to April, you don't need a dome. Um, Teams like Chicago, teams like New York, New Jersey, 
they survived in the league. Um, they were teams in the original XFL. But I think a place that's a little smaller, I think New York, where it's not New York City and there's a million things to do left and right, it's Syracuse, not to bash on Syracuse. I live in Jacksonville, Florida, and there's things to do, but it's not L.A., it's not New York City. <laughs> um, Jacksonville gets banged on as an NFL city, but Jacksonville is actually a huge area. And so if you saw kids from the Florida Gators and Florida State Seminoles play on an XFL team because they didn't make it in the pros, I'm sure you would get passionate fans <laughs> down here that would care about an XFL team. I think Syracuse would be of the same sort, especially in the Northeast where college football isn't king. You know, it, there's no huge powerhouses in the Northeast. You have Penn State um, where you're around, Troy, but the 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 true – Northeast, that New York-ish, you know, way up in the corner. Um, if you're putting a football team up there, an XFL team, you know, NFL season's over, Giants, Jets, okay, cool. But you've got all these kids from Rutgers, maybe not making it to the pros, or Buffalo, good old Lance Leopold, call, <laughs> coaching the Buffalo, uh, University of Buffalo over there. Got, um, got to throw in the old coach there. from our college there. You got to throw it in there. <laughs> Got the old Wisconsin Whitewater connection. Got a yeah. love, Coach Lance. I actually enjoy. Maybe we should try to get him on the show. We talked about this before. We've got to try to get him on the show. So yeah. I had to throw it out there. But you know, I just wanted to, to chime in quickly here, Kevin. Yeah. It, what you're saying is we've brought this up. The XFL. You don't need the big-time names, and you're not going to get them. You're going to get those guys that just love to play football, and that's what people want. And you look at the number of colleges in the Northeast. You got, you're even going to have Penn State around there, Syracuse football. you got Rutgers, like you mentioned. you got Maryland. You've got all these programs that are in the middle of the pack. But there's good players on those teams and players that love the game of football. And so regionally, you could have a number of guys to select from. And that's not yep. even considering everybody else in America. But even in the Northeast, like you said, that there are a number of programs in, in the Pennsylvania area, New York area, that, that have good programs where they would grant the following. Because the one thing people – are stuck on with this, Kevin, is media, media, media. I talked about it last week. I don't think you need major media market. You, you brought it up. Passionate fan base. And will you sell the Carrier Dome out? Maybe on the home opener. Maybe game one you'll sell it out. But even if it's a good product, to continuously sell out games, that's tough. doesn't matter what sport you are. I mean, look at Major right. League Baseball, Kevin. They don't sell those stadiums out every night. No. I mean, the, the good teams, the Yankees, the Cubs, so on and so forth, yeah, but those are well-established franchises. So, you know, you, the expectation, you brought it up. Ohio State, 100,000. We brought it up last week. Penn State. Those stadiums are too big. They're too yep. big. They're just way too large to have an XFL city or to play there i guess you could still have a a team in those cities but not that stadium because you're going to watch it on tv and it's going to it's going to look like a you know uh, just minuscule number of people there it's not going to look like the college football games you're used to tune, tuning on and watching on saturday but i think you could get a fair amount of people in the carrier dome from syracuse it brings up our point that it's a college town those college kids what what a crazy place. You want crazy fans? They'll get crazy. They'll get crazy for an XFL game, especially the Carrier Dome, which is right there by campus. Yeah. What more could you ask for? And I'm sure you'll draw from the city. And people will travel. I mean, it's not, it's not a huge traveling distance, but I think it would survive. The only downfall, like everybody keeps saying and everything I keep reading, it's not a major media market, Kevin, but I, I'm past that. Every time I read that, I just giggle. It's like, why? I, I would much rather have a passionate fan base, and if you put a good product on the field, you're going to get media coverage. 
doesn't matter. You could be in New York, and if the product is terrible, you think the media is going to cover you? No. You right. need to have a good product. You have a good product, they'll find a way to cover you. And I don't think at that point it really matters the location for the media outlets. I think it then matters for your passionate fan base, which Syracuse, in my mind, I think they're passionate about it. I'm going to turn it back over to you, youngster. Yeah, and we start this conversation on Syracuse specifically because, again, someone reached out to us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter, at Youngster Old Man. If you have an idea for a show topic, feel free to let us know. We'll talk 15 minutes about it. <laughs> it's not going to hurt us. We can find certain things to talk about with the NF- XFL. If we don't get stuff on Twitter left and right, but if we do, and we think it's a cool idea, cool topic to bring up, we'll bring it up. This whole show, just based on Syracuse, and I'll say this too, that Again, follow us on Twitter at YoungsterOldMan. That's all one word. You can follow Troy at TroyRobert967. Follow me at KIDCUNI. But follow our show at YoungsterOldMan. Let us know what you want to talk, what you want us to talk about. Give us an idea. Give us your thought. If you put a lot of thought into something, share us your idea. That's what someone did this past week. That's why we're talking about this right now. But so, Troy, in 2001, the XFL, its first week, the ratings were higher than World Series ratings. Uh, literally, I did my homework. They were higher than your average World Series rating, week one of the XFL. So people cared. People were interested. People were entertained to see what was going to happen with this league. And I think the same type of thing will happen again in 2020. It's about keeping the lasting media coverage there and the ratings not falling through a cliff like they did week after week after week until like week six where it was like basically dead. (laughs) I mean, it went from above World Series to worst professional sporting event on a major television network in American history within like a six-week span. I mean, so it went from the top to the bottom. Um, But so teams in the league in 2001, Orlando, Chicago, New York, New Jersey, L.A., San Francisco, Las Vegas, those were eight of the ten teams. It still failed after about a month and a half. <laughs> I mean, so do you think Birmingham being in there in 2001, do you think Memphis being in there in 2001 and not having Austin and uh, I don't even know what, one other big city in the country, do you think that was the downfall of the XFL? That's why it failed after a month and a half? Was it because only eight of your 10 teams were big major media markets or six of your eight were big major, major media markets? I don't think that was an issue. I don't think not having a team in L.A. or not having a team in San Francisco or Vegas or Orlando or Chicago or New York, that, that's, that's not what the downfall was. So to get close to selling out a 49,000 stadium in the Carrier Dome at Syracuse, like you said, Troy, on campus in the state of New York, it's going to get love. It's going to get energy. It's going to be interesting. And, again, you've got a lot of local prospect kids playing college football there that may not make it to the NFL just like anywhere else, but especially the Northeast where, again, college football is not king. It's not everything. So the XFL could be huge in Syracuse. I like the idea a lot. I like rampant, crazy college town fan bases like the XFL had Birmingham. It was a bad team in 2001. <laughs> so it happened. But Birmingham, I love that idea. Memphis, I like that idea. It's interesting. Tennessee isn't, I don't think, 100% all sold out on football. They love the volunteers. But outside of that, Tennessee Titans, no one really cares about the Titans outside of me. I mean, honestly. But so Syracuse, You might be. You might be the only fan, Kevin. <laughs> you the might one be. Only. The one and only. The one and yeah. only Titan fan. But yeah, I, but, I like the Syracuse idea. Yeah, I, I did too. And again, you, you brought it up. I, I, I haven't used this word in a while so eloquently to follow us on Twitter, <laughs> at Youngster Old Man. That's how we came up with our topic, is Syracuse a good place for an XFL team? I'm looking at the time, and we, we always want to try to keep this right around 15 minutes, and we're right a little bit over that mark, Kevin. But I want to get your quick thoughts, and then I'll give you my quick thoughts. And this is what we're going to do. If you have a city 
that you think would be a great spot for an XFL team, find us on Twitter, at Youngster Old Man. Just tell us what city you think would be a good XFL team. We'll do a whole episode on it. Kevin, one pro, one con as to why Syracuse would be a good XFL team and why they won it. You're on the clock. Go, and then I'll give you my answer. Then we're going to let our lovely fans go. I don't have a big con. I really don't. That's not blowing smoke up, you know, the person who mentioned this on Twitter, his butt. It, it, it's really not. It, I don't have a big con. I think that you have the Carrier Dome there on a college campus that really cares about sports, that is loud, that is crazy. I, I like it a lot. It draws from that Northeast region. I, <laughs> I like it a lot. I don't have a big con. It is in a dome so that if it is blizzarding out and you don't want people, you know, going crazy, freezing in a blizzard in early March, early, mid-February, I get it. You can close the dome. It's there on a college campus. I, I think students would eat it up. I think students would eat it up for sure because tickets are not going to be through the roof. It's the XFL. The demand's not going to be insane. Sorry, Vince McMahon, but the demand's not going to be insane. XFL tickets. It's just not. Year one, if you build your brand, build your league, it absolutely could be. But in general, I, big pro, I mean, again, like I've been mentioning, it's on a college campus. It draws from that northeast region. Um, it is in the corner. I, I like it a lot for a number of reasons. Big cons, I honestly don't have any, not to, <laughs> not to give a boring answer. But that is my answer. I, I like it a lot. My one con, I brought it up before, uh, and, and, and to give in to what everybody else is saying, the only argument you're going to get, and it's not really from me, it's more of a generalization, is yeah. the media market. And then the con is, this is my only con. If the product's not good, it's going to fail miserably because right. now you've lost your college crowd. So a lot of this is going to go on to, to Vince McMahon and the league and putting a good product on the field because the con to a, a true college city, to me, if you lose the interest of that base, you don't have anywhere else to draw from. You've lost it. So it better be darn good because that would be a big con. If you lose that college atmosphere, whoop, that team is dead in the water. The advantage is kind of the same. If you got a good product, You've got loyalty. You've got passionate college kids that are going to go be rowdy, going to make it loud, make it a fun atmosphere. It's not, you know, a bunch of middle-aged guys like myself that go to a game. I cheer. I yell. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it and moaning and groaning with, with a bunch of other middle-aged men around me. <laughs> That's not the atmosphere you're going to get in the XFL if you go to Syracuse. You'll get some of the middle-aged guys like me out there. But for the most part, you're going to get the millennials. You're going to get the college kids. They're going to be out there. They're going to be excited. Nothing else to be doing in Syracuse in the spring is my guess. They're going to go to the XFL. But it's got to be a good product. With that said, for the youngster, follow on Twitter, at Kid Tunney, K-I-D-C-U-N-I. I am the old man. Follow me, Troy Robert 967 And make sure you follow our show handle, at youngster, old man, one word, and give us your city for an XFL city. Talk to you next week, everyone. Have a good day.